eternal love of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. We're just being drawn into this timelessness, past and present meet here in the Eucharist. Earth and heaven meet. To our eyes, there's the veil covering the Eucharist. God will only reveal himself to us as we are able to accept him. But now, in silent adoration, let us just worship, praise, and thank the Father of mercy who has sent his Son to be the divine mercy made flesh dwelling with us. And even as we do in this silent prayer, worship, just become conscious that over this hall now a blanket of mercy just be aware of the blanket of mercy covering all of us everyone in this hall no matter what state you're in at peace or agitated cold or sleepy this blanket of mercy covers all of us, remembering that mercy is love poured out on each one of us now. As you worship and praise, you're preparing yourself to receive that mercy, that love that may penetrate our hearts. reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus looked up and he saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasure box. He also saw a poor widow dropping in 
two small coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For all gave an offering from their plenty. But she instead, out of her poverty, gave everything she had to live on. Since the Lord would like us to ponder on that gospel story as we sit with him to this holy hour. Somehow in that very brief story is summed up. What we've been asked throughout this conference and we dare to trust totally can we dare to give beyond the point of where it's comfortable can we dare to give as Jesus gave So in that courtyard of the women where the collections took place and there were many treasure boxes or many treasure troves there where people placed their votive offerings into whichever one they wanted and asked of God. And as they put their money into these boxes, they declared how much they were giving and why they were giving it. And ironically in the courtyard of the women, the story this day is that it is the men who are coming, the rich men, the self-sufficient men, the men who've made it, the arrogant men, the important men, full of their importance, And they would present their gifts into these treasure boxes, there were 13 of them. And as they dropped them in, they would declare out loud so that Jesus didn't have to eavesdrop. They were telling how much they gave. And then he saw a poor widow, not just a widow, who would have been an outcast anyway, would have been a nobody. In Jewish society, widows were not held in any high regard. They were not associated with, you wouldn't seek them out. There was no kudos talking to a widow. Echoes of Shane speaking to us last night. No kudos in talking to the sex abusers the gays, the outsiders. They're not fashionable. They're not acceptable. They're marginalized. Not only was this person, this woman a widow, but she was a poor one. Luke goes out of his way to stress the rich, the poor. The good thief, the other thief. Woe to the rich, happy are the poor. And she drops in two small coins. Imagine how she felt. She'd have to say what she was giving, have to announce it. And she would have to ask a state why what she sought and Jesus watched and was deeply deeply touched by this action 
this was an act of mercy, of total giving. And he said to those around him, especially his disciples, his followers, he says it to us. We would say, we follow Jesus. And he would say to us, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. And they would have been putting in thousands and thousands of pounds. But this poor widow gave all. For all gave an offering out of their plenty. But she instead, out of her poverty, gave everything she had to live on. Jesus was overwhelmed with her generosity. I sensed God gauges our generosity not by the amount we give, but rather by the amount we have left after giving. That's how he gauged the generosity of those contributing to the different causes there that day. They left the rich, the wealthy, and they had plenty. She left and she had nothing. And God in Jesus was blessed and praised and glorified by such a generosity. This was a generosity not of the pocket, a generosity of heart. This wasn't a logical giving, working it out. This was something coming from a, a greater death in this woman. She dropped in the two coins. Logic would have said, hold on to one. You need something to live on for the rest of the week. But no. Here lies the question. <clears throat> I'd like you to ponder on it for a while. Why did she give all? Ask the Lord to open that question for you. Why did she give all? Couldn't she have kept something for herself? How do you feel about our giving all? What is it saying to you? What is it saying to me? Let's look at our own giving and look at hers. And we're still left with the question, why did she do it? How could she do that?
as I read his story this morning, and I was reminded of my own mother, who was a widow for 50 years and reared four of us. And the gospel that we used on the day we at our funeral mass was this one of the widow's might. And she had this faith and this trust in God. She had said to me many times, put your faith, put your trust in the man above. He will not let you down. You can trust him. I struggled with that and still struggle with it. But she lived it. All the years of her widowhood, which were never easy. And we were graced as a family by that widow's giving. We've been graced with many widows present here among us this weekend. Maybe in your own lives there are many. Today let it be a, a real celebration of them. Because they, like the widow in the gospel, very often are the forgotten ones. The ignored ones. The ones who carry many lonely and difficult burdens. What makes a widow want to give when she is so needy? What makes any of us want to give when we're so needy? It is the fact that we recognize how needy we are and that the only answer to our needs, our misery, is to throw ourselves at the mercy of God. Throwing ourselves at the mercy of God and trusting him involves us letting go and giving him everything. It's only by doing it that we come to understand that we can trust. We can trust the promises of Jesus. We can trust the words of our gospel that we've used as a backdrop to the weekend. Trust that indeed if we give, we shall receive. Give, and it will be given to you, and you will receive in your sack good measure pressed down full and running over for the measure you give will be the measure you receive back can we believe that that widow left the temple that day without worry if it was us we'd be worrying saying how am I going to manage now for the rest of the week I just made a, an impulsive act there but obviously this widow did not it wouldn't have been the first time she'd given like this and she hadn't come to know what happens when you utterly trust God We come here this weekend, we've been reminded <clears throat> of how difficult it is for us to forgive, to love our enemies, to pray for those who do wrong on us, to bless those who curse us. We found 
ourselves struggling and then when we were invited to pray together and to have the sense of praying as the nation that difficulty became even more profound could we drop the two coins into the Lord's treasury here today our own misery our own difficulty to forgive ourselves our families those who have hurt us give him that coin now as we tried to do yesterday at the reconciliation service to continue to give it to him saying I need your mercy today Lord and give him the second coin the coin of our difficulty in wanting to forgive forgive the English forgive the men of violence forgive the intransigence of the unionists to forgive our own leaders our, our own nation we come and can we drop that coin of repentance together here in this holy hour saying Lord the situation is quite quite beyond us but you can triumph you've won the victory it is yours you can hold back the justice with your word and second chronicles spoke of today if we come as your little ones if we come weeping for our land weeping for our people offering forgiveness to those whom we might have regarded as unforgivable before we came in here this weekend for what they have done that our generations past would have seen as unforgivable for what has been done and now today the invitation is to break this spiral of violence the Holy Father says by the miracle of forgiveness can we let go now as the past and present meet here the generations past, present and future are gathered in the eternity of Christ's presence here divine mercy poured out on us can we offer those two coins so that we have really nothing left we've emptied our heart of all the bitterness the resentment the anger the shame humiliation emptying it all the fear and particularly those who grieve because they've lost someone through the troubles of violence down the years to let them go now empty our hearts of all of this the two coins our own personal resentments and the resentments of the nation drop them into the treasury of the sacred heart pouring out the blood and water on us offering us something far greater in return that we may trust enough to act on this now so that his mercy may pour not just on us and all who belong to us but on this land the Father's vision the vision 
of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary for this land be fulfilled. We break the power of evil by the greater power of forgiveness and mercy. Love overcomes all. picture yourself as the widow or do you picture yourself as the self-sufficient who will only give a little because they need the rest for themselves ask that you may convert and be like that widow and visualize yourself handing those two coins over to the Lord. That he may pour out so much more. Give, and it will be given to you. And you will receive in your sight good measure, pressed down, full, and running over. But the measure you give will be the measure you receive back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. Be merciful as your Heavenly Father is merciful. So as the choir, the groups sing something appropriate for us to stay with those words stay with this struggle now to be the widow dropping in those coins ask that you may be able to let go
Father of mercies is inviting us to come, come to him. I'll change your hearts, he says. Let me, but give me those hearts. Pure, let me purify them now. You may let go. You may need to weep. You may need to look at what you've hidden for years but come to me now trust me we heard this invitation from Father George and Francis to come individually and as a nation that we will become a light a light for other nations because we would choose a different way to live, the way of mercy. Come, make all those sacrifices that are necessary. Fast, pray, do all of those, but do them by offering me your hearts. Lord desires that for us. one occasion he spoke to Faustine about that desire he had for the perfection of souls of chosen souls and we have been chosen to be here today he said to her chosen souls are in my hands lights which I cast into the darkness of the world and with which I illuminate as stars illumine the night so chosen souls illumine the earth and the more perfect the soul is the stronger and more far reaching the light shed by it it can be hidden and unknown even to those closest to it and yet its holiness is reflected in souls even to the most distant extremities of the world if we doubt that this is true is it not true of the widow in the gospel the unknown hidden soul and yet her story has touched the widest extremities of the world 
time is lost here in this presence of the Eucharist. The widow is with us here in the eternal presence of the chosen gifts to the Father. Jesus was moved deeply because very shortly after that incident he himself was going to empty himself out on our behalf. Even his heart was totally emptied the blood and water flowing from it for the whole world in a moment or two I'm going to invite Father Terry to walk among you with the blessed sacrament and before it, we do, again, to empty ourselves so that we can receive. In this personal encounter and this encounter with us as a group representing the nation, this encounter with the Savior, risen Lord, living here in this Eucharist hidden and yet in that encounter just ask that he may draw back the veil a little bit for you to know his presence his love well just I'll just pray this prayer for you this let go prayer this prayer of trust Let go and allow me to love you. Let go and be filled with my love. Let go and trust me. Let go and receive my peace. Let go and listen to me. Let go and I will teach you. Let go and learn from me. Let go and let my wisdom, my knowledge and my truth inspire you. Let go and thank me. Let go and praise me. Let go and let my spirit rest in you. Let go and rest in my spirit. Let go and love me. Let go, forgive and be merciful let go and accept yourself let go and wait for me to work that prayer of the Father be filled in us in this moment of great grace just gaze at the Eucharist and sense if not see his loving eyes looking on you with utmost love and mercy and as he does say I'm not alone here I wish you to see the brokenness of our own land and of all the lands of the world Lord touch them too 
as you're touching me. Now a special action we're going to ask Father Terry to bless north this land, north, south, east and west. Before we do, however, there is a need for us to ask, am I now united with Christ with a heart of love, of a heart of forgiveness? As we ask the Lord not just to bless this land, but that we bless Belfast, London, Dublin, so that the bitterness and hatreds and all the blocks that have prevented us from coming together in a new way, in the way of mercy, all those be removed. And as we do this, and we unite with the heart of Jesus and Mary, in the action of the Father of mercy, we send that spirit of forgiveness and mercy together as a nation to saying we forgive we want to forget in God's action we will forget and begin something totally new and as he blesses north, south, east and west we're mindful of the call of the Father through Jesus to, to pray not just for ourselves but for the whole world that the joy that is here will now emanate and go forth and touch everyone all of humanity touch it down the generations the past so that they are released and brought if they need releasing and brought into the eternal presence so that the present living humanity will turn and discover we want to forget in God's action we will forget and begin something totally new and as he blesses north, south, east and west we're mindful of the call of the Father through Jesus to, to pray not just for ourselves but for the whole world that the joy that is here will now emanate and go forth and touch everyone all of humanity touch it down the generations the past so that they are released and brought if they need releasing and brought into the eternal presence so that the present living humanity will turn and discover with the hearts of Mary, Joseph, all the saints, the saints of the lands of England, of Ireland, of Scotland and Wales, the saints of all the world, and with particular joy, joined with blessed Faustina. Secretary of his merciful love. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the divine mercy. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. 
Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his...